Hi, I'm Drew, and this is Deciphered, a show by Blockstream that's here to break down the basics of Bitcoin in an easy to understand way, so that no matter what skill level of Bitcoin you might be at, you can follow along too. Today, we're gonna talk about how to make our first Bitcoin and liquid wallets. Once we make our wallets, we're gonna take self-ownership of our digital assets. For those of you who don't know what Liquid is, it's a layer two solution to the layer one Bitcoin protocol. It allows for cheaper transactions, faster transactions, and more confidential transactions. So with that, let's go and make our first Bitcoin and Liquid wallet. When you leave your Bitcoin and other digital assets on an exchange or in another person's custody, you open yourself up to unwanted third-party risk. Unlike gold, credit cards, or even the current banking system, Bitcoin allows you to take full control over your funds when you own your own private keys. When you own your own private keys, you can truly become self-sovereign and become your own bank. When you leave your Bitcoin and other digital assets on an exchange or in other people's custody, you open yourself up to tyrannical governments, evil CEOs, or just straight up bad actors that want to take all of your Bitcoin and other digital assets and run off like a bandit. So in order to avoid that, we want to take self-ownership of our funds. And in order to do that, we're going to have to practice. It comes off a lot scarier than it actually is. But like with anything in life, practice makes perfect. Fortunately for us, the Blockstream Green is super easy and intuitive to understand and take ownership of our own assets. Before we go into the app, let's first do a deep dive on what Blockstream Green is. It's a non-custodial Bitcoin and liquid wallet. It supports single signature, multi-signature, hardware wallet support, fee control, coin control, and much, much more. But like I mentioned earlier, we're just gonna be focusing on single signature self-custody. Before we begin to set up our Bitcoin and our liquid Bitcoin wallets, let's first understand what a Bitcoin wallet even is. Think of your Bitcoin wallet as a standard bank account. It allows you to send, receive, and store your Bitcoin. But a huge difference between the standard banking system and the Bitcoin network is, is that the Bitcoin network is interoperable. So what this means is, if you were to have lost your wallet, but you still have your recovery phrase, you can input that recovery phrase into a new wallet on any device that might be, and your funds will be there. So it doesn't even need to be the same wallet. You could input that recovery phrase into a phone wallet, a computer wallet, or even a hardware wallet. Here are some general best practices when it comes to setting up our Bitcoin wallet. When we set up our Bitcoin wallet, we're going to want to be in a room by ourselves and with no cameras. The idea is when we write down our recovery phrase that there's no snooping eyes looking at what we write down. When we generate our recovery phrase, it will either be 12 or 24 randomly generated words. Your recovery phrase is without a doubt the most important piece of information when it comes to your Bitcoin wallet. So with that being said, you're gonna to wanna to write down your recovery phrase rather than taking a picture or a screenshot. The reason behind this is when you take a picture or a screenshot, that will get uploaded to the cloud. And even if that doesn't, whoever has access to your device now has access to your recovery phrase, which means they have access to your funds. Some other general guidelines when it comes to your recovery phrase. Keep your recovery phrase somewhere safe. You don't wanna forget where you put your recovery phrase. When you have your recovery phrase, it doesn't matter if you lose your pin, your pin changes, you lose your wallet, you lose the device to your wallet, or you change your wallet. As long as you have your recovery phrase, you can input the recovery phrase into a new, brand new Bitcoin wallet and your funds will still be there. Never email or text your recovery phrase. Blockstream Green will never reach out to you asking you for your recovery phrase. If this happens to you, please report the scammer to Blockstream support. Never save your recovery phrase to a device that is connected to the internet. Much like how we don't want to take a picture or a screenshot of our recovery phrase, when we save our recovery phrase to a device that's connected to the internet, we open ourselves up to unwanted third-party attacks. For even better security, you can get yourself a Blockstream Metal or Blockstream Capsule recovery phrase tool. These recovery phrase tools are pieces of metal that you stamp your recovery phrase into rather than writing your recovery phrase down on a piece of paper, which can be easily lost or destroyed. The Blockstream Metal and Blockstream Capsule protects you against fire damage, water damage, and even little rodents that might get a little too hungry. For another layer of security, you can get yourself a Blockstream Jade hardware wallet. 
This allows you to store your recovery phrase in a device that's not connected to the internet. In a later video, we'll be doing a much deeper dive on how to set up the Blockstream Jade hardware wallet, along with how to take self-custody of our Bitcoin and our liquid assets. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ultimately, these additional security tools are not necessary to have, but they will definitely help you sleep better at night knowing that your recovery phrase, which is ultimately your Bitcoin, will be safe even if a mini apocalypse kicks off. Now let's see what this looks like in Blockstream Green. For the purpose of this video, I will be breaking every single rule that I just laid out. So with that being said, let's go to the app and let's make our first Bitcoin wallet. So now that I have my phone out with Green Wallet already pre-installed, I'm gonna open up Green. I'm going to press Add Wallet, and then I'm going to press the I agree to the terms and service. Read over the terms and service before you check that checkbox. I've already read through it. I'm gonna click New Wallet, and then you're given two options of Bitcoin or Liquid. We're gonna do Bitcoin for this example. And then you're given the options of single sig or multi-sig shield. So this is where I'm gonna call in my trusty friend, the Sarcastic Helper Bot. Sarcastic Helper Bot, can you please pull up the chart? With single sig, your funds are secured by one key on your device. Single sig setups are easier to set up, operate, and recover your funds compared to the multi-sig setup. Choosing multi-sig shield provides you a more advanced security model against unwanted third-party attacks. With one key stored on your device and another key stored on Blockstream servers, which is protected by your two-factor authentication method of choice, it becomes increasingly difficult for attackers to spend your funds. 2FA is an additional layer of security. 2FA means that two devices have to approve the transaction before the transaction goes through. You can set up your 2FA using text, email, or an authenticator app of your choice. However, if you lose your 2FA, you're going to need to do a 2FA reset. This means your Bitcoin and liquid assets will be unspendable for one year. So you're gonna to have to make sure that you keep your 2FA safe or you set up multiple forms of 2FA. And now I'd like to introduce you to Rich. He's from our support team and he's a really swell and a really smart guy. Rich is gonna be going over some additional security protocols that we can follow. So with that, I'm gonna wait for Rich to call in. Thanks for having me on, Drew. Drew was nice enough to share a little bit of his spotlight to let me make an important note about security policies. So I'll make this quick. Along with your recovery phrase, you also need to know your security policy in order to restore your green wallet or log into your Blockstream Jade. This is due to the way wallet generation works. A wallet that uses multi-sig shield actually leads to a completely different wallet when its exact same recovery phrase is logged into by selecting single sig. If you ever picked the wrong security policy when restoring, I'm assuming you panicked when your wallet was showing zero balance. Not to worry. In these situations, just restore or log into your wallet using the policy you chose during setup, and your Bitcoin will magically appear. If you have any other questions about wallet types or which security policy might be best for you, you can find me by submitting a ticket on help.blockstream.com. Thanks for sharing, Drew. Thanks, Rich, for the explainer. That was great, and I cannot wait for you to pop back in the future. And so with that, let's go back to our Blockstream green to finish setting up our first Bitcoin wallet. So we're still at the screen of single sig or multi-sig shield. For this example, I'm just going to pick single sig. Then you're going to be prompted to either pick 12 or 24 words. Depending on how much security you want, you're going to want to pick the proper amount of words for your wallet. For this example, I'm just going to pick 12. You're going to be prompted with another screen telling you what I told you earlier. You're going to just want to write down your seed phrase. So I'm going to press continue. And this is where I'm prompted to with my recovery phrase. So I'm gonna to wanna to write these down, handy dandy notebook and pen, and right away I'll go. Success, continue. And now you're gonna to wanna to name your wallet. For this example, I'm just gonna do test. Once you press done, you can read the app settings, but you can also do that later. I'm gonna press continue. You're gonna to wanna to set a proper pin. Because this is just a test wallet, I'm gonna just put ones across the board. Once you've made a proper pin, press continue. Success, 
press next. And just like that, you made your first Bitcoin wallet. Congratulations. So now that I've set up my Bitcoin wallet, let's get some Bitcoin onto our wallet. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be using this new wallet and Cash App. But the steps that I take to receive Bitcoin from Cash App would be the same steps that you would take to receive some funds from a friend, family member, or even your job. So to receive our, some Bitcoin, we're gonna to go to receive, and a new window will pop up with a QR code and an address down below it. You could scan that QR code with another camera. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna copy this address. Copy to my clipboard, and then I'm gonna go over to Cash App, and you could see that I have $14 in my account. I'm just gonna send myself 10 bucks. And in order to do that, we're gonna to go to the send, we're gonna paste in the address. We're gonna type in 10 bucks. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is press send. We're gonna, because we're not in a rush, we're just gonna do the medium speed. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to read like the first five and last five digits of our address, just to make sure that there's no malware going on. To do that, we're just gonna go back to our green wallet. We're gonna read the first four or five digits, which is three E-T-Y-W, three E-T-Y-W. And then the last four digits is T-Q-J-C, T-Q-J-C, perfect. Everything lines up, so I'm gonna confirm and send. Fantastic. Now, if we go back to our wallet and we wait a little bit, we will see that a unconfirmed transaction comes in. So let's wait for that to come through. Roughly every 10 minutes, a new block is created on the Bitcoin blockchain. When you post a transaction, you have to wait for a miner to accept the transaction. The higher the fee you pay, the more likely your transaction will be included into the next block. The lower the fee you pay, the less likely it is to be included into the next block. If you want a deeper dive into the Bitcoin blockchain and how all of this works, go to our help center. There is a much better explanation as to what's going on and a lot more diagrams. In general, you should wait for six confirmations before you consider your transaction to be final. After six confirmations, it has become increasingly uneconomical for a bad actor to reverse your transaction. Once you get six confirmations, go about your day with a big smile on your face, knowing that the Bitcoin network is forever and always protecting that transaction. Also, remember to label each one of your transactions and keep tabs of your UTXOs. If what I just said made no sense to you, make sure you check out our last deciphered video where we do a deep dive on coin control. Great. After six confirmations, we can consider that transaction to be final. Now to create a liquid wallet. When you create your liquid wallet, it's the same steps as creating your Bitcoin wallet. Now that you've safely stored your liquid recovery phrase, let's learn a little bit more about the liquid network. Other than faster block times, cheaper transactions, and confidential transactions, the liquid network allows you to send assets over the network. These include liquid Bitcoin, stable coins like LCAT or USDT, STOs like the BMN, or even NFTs if you're into that kind of thing. Whatever assets you're sending or receiving, it uses the same liquid address. So this means you do not need to create a brand new liquid wallet for each type of asset you have. You can have everything under one wallet. Another great thing about the liquid network is that your transactions are considered to be final after two confirmations. One confirmation takes one minute in the liquid network, so your transaction is considered final after two minutes. There's many different ways to obtain liquid Bitcoin. You can use wallets to buy or trade like CoinOS or Aqua. You can use peer-to-peer -peer like HODL HODL, SideShift, or SideSwap. You can use exchanges like BISC, Bitfinex, BTC Turk, and many others. Or you can just run your own liquid node, which will allow you to peg in and peg out your liquid Bitcoin. For today's example, I'll be using the app called SideSwap. It's a mobile wallet that allows you to atomically swap your liquid assets. So say you have liquid Bitcoin and you wanted USDT, this app would allow you to do that. It also allows you to peg in and out of liquid for near zero fees. 
Now that we're back in our Blockstream green, I'm gonna take the same steps that I did to receive some Bitcoin, but this time I'm just gonna be using my Liquid wallet. So to do that, to receive some Liquid Bitcoin, I'm gonna press receive. I'm gonna be given an address. Again, you can use that QR code if you have another device, I don't. So I'm gonna press copy. I'm gonna go over to side swap. I'm gonna press send. I'm gonna paste from my clipboard. And again, we're just gonna read the first five digits and the last five digits. It's just good practice to be in. So from here, we see it's VJL64. So I'm gonna go back to my green wallet, VJL64, cool. And then the last five digits are 66XZJ. 66XZJ, fantastic. I'm gonna press continue. I don't want anything left in my side swap, so I'm just gonna press max. I'm gonna press continue. I'm gonna read everything over, make sure everything looks good. I'm gonna send all $9 worth. This is the right address and the network fee looks acceptable to me. So with that, I'm gonna press send. This pops up a new screen, just showing me some information. Um, everything looks good. Fantastic. We can see that there's no more liquid Bitcoin in our side swap. So if we go back to green, we can go back. And you can see that we have an unconfirmed transaction within our liquid wallet. Great job. And as I mentioned earlier, you only need two confirmations in the liquid network to be considered final. That's it for today, folks. Today, we learned how to make our first Bitcoin in liquid wallets. We also took self custody of our Bitcoin and our liquid assets. So thank you for watching. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions on how to use green or how to take self custody. We'd be happy to help you out. Also, leave a comment down below on what you want to learn next. And until next time, stack some sats. And as always, don't trust, verify.